Hi, this is Beers Barn. Welcome back to Game Design. This is our third video for this game project. And in our last video, we made it so the enemy chases our player and attacks when they get close. What we're gonna add today is an attack that our character can do uh, against the enemy. So to start with, I'm gonna take the attack animation I created, I'm gonna add it to our character object. So I'm gonna double click on my character. I'm gonna go to my animations window up here in the top right. I'm gonna right click, add animation, go to the folder on the top left, and let's find our animation that we created for our character's attack. Here's mine. It's uh, my ghost spinning. I'm gonna rename it. I'm gonna call this attack. And you can also change the speed if you need to. You can preview it right here. See how it looks. It's pretty good. It has a little spinning animation. Uh, great. So we have idle, we have walk, and we have an attack animation. Let's go ahead and close our animations window. And let's head over to the event sheet. We're gonna make an event that says when the player hits a certain key, then the character will switch to the attack animation. And they create a projectile that'll aim towards, um, you know what we could do? We could make it so that the player uses the mouse for this. So maybe they click the mouse button and the projectile that they shoot out will aim towards wherever your mouse is. Uh, let's do that. We're gonna have to add the mouse input into our game. So let's head back over to the layout actually. And we're gonna right click anywhere in the white space and uh, insert a new object. Now the first time we added an input, we used the keyboard. That's what controls our movement. But if we wanna use the mouse in our game too, we're gonna to also have to add the mouse input. So find mouse, insert that, and now we have mouse controls in our game as well. Now let's head over to the event sheet and we can add a new event. The event's gonna say when our player clicks the mouse button, then the character's animation should switch to their attack animation. So let's say the conditions, the mouse, and highlighted in yellow is on click. So we can say, okay, on click, we can choose which click they have to do, the left button, the middle button, the right button. The left is most common. So let's say when our player clicks the left button, then we'll add an action, we'll take our character, and we can set the animation for our character to be the attack animation. Great. Now, if we try that out, it only works if you're standing still. I click my mouse button and it plays the attack animation. But if I try doing that while I'm moving, it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because we're actually telling Construct to do two animations at the same time. We've already told Construct that like the entire time you're moving, whenever you're pressing the A, S, W, or D keys, it should be playing the walk animation. But if you're doing this and this, it can't play both animations simultaneously, so it just doesn't work. What we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna say, okay, when we click the mouse button, let's disable all of this stuff. Let's make it so our character doesn't move and doesn't play the movement animation. One of the reasons why we made this group is because not only does it help us organize stuff, but it's also helpful mechanically. We can turn off any group. We can deactivate the events in any group. And to do that, we can click add action. We can go to the system. And then right at the top here, you'll see an option for set group active. If you double click on set group active, it's gonna say, okay, which group? And if we delete one of the quotation marks, we have all the different groups we have here. We just have enemy one or character movement. We're gonna take the character movement group and we are going to deactivate it. Click done. So when our player presses the left mouse button, the animation switches to attack and all of the character movement group events, all of these in here are deactivated. They no longer work. So when I'm running, I can click the mouse button and it plays the attack animation. Now the only problem is all my movement stuff is deactivated. So I have to have some kind of event that says when the animation is finished playing, reactivate the character movement group. So let's add a second event. And the conditions for this is gonna be when the character's attack animation is finished. So the condition is gonna be the character on finished under the animation section on finished, delete one quotation mark, attack animation. So when the attack animation is finished, then we can add an action, go to the system, and we can set the group active for character movement to be activated again. So when you click the mouse button, character movement's deactivated. When the attack is finished, character activated, 
uh, character movement is activated again. Try it out. And that should work. What's nice about this is not only does it make the animation play, but it also adds kind of a mechanical level to the game. It's like a gameplay thing where the player has to decide, do I want to move in the second or do I have enough time to pause and attack before I can move again? Now, there are other games where you can attack and move at the same time, right? And we can create one of those too. The only difference is that we'd have to do some different stuff with the animation. We'd also have to create an animation of your character moving and attacking simultaneously. We can do that in a later project. But for now, I think this works pretty well. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a projectile that comes out of our enemy and uh, aims towards wherever our mouse is. So the first step is we're going to have to add a projectile object to the game. So let's head over to our layout, right click anywhere in the white space. We're going to insert a new object, click once on Sprite. I'm going to call this uh, projectile. You can call it whatever you want though. And um, let's load the sprite for our projectile in. Uh, I just made this bone. I'm going to make him spit out a bone. And uh, good. There's no animation or anything on this one. You can add an animation if you want to. But mine is just a single sprite. I'm going to change the size of it. I would also maybe recommend taking a look at the origin point. This little tool right here. We want the origin point to always be kind of in the middle of our uh, sprite here. Um, to make it line up with where we want it to come out of our character. So take that and just kind of move the origin point in the middle just in case it's not already. Great, so I'm gonna make this bone fly out of my ghost's mouth and uh, aim towards my mouse. Now, we want to add a behavior to this. And just like with the enemy, I think we can use the bullet behavior. That makes the most sense probably. So I'm gonna add behavior. I'm gonna go down to bullet and that'll make it move in just any single direction. Now let's head over to our event sheet. I'm gonna say that I'm going to say that when the character is performing the attack animation, that's when the bone should come out, right? That's when the projectile should appear. So I'm going to go to my character. I'm going to say, um, is playing. I can check under the animation section. When it is playing the attack animation, then add an action, go to my character, and there's an option for spawn another object. Whenever you want one object to like, come out of another object, you can hit spawn another object. And that way our ghost will create a projectile. Now layer and image point, we can mess around with those in a little bit, but uh, let's try it out. It's gonna get a little crazy, but whenever I click the attack button, it's gonna make a ton of bones, right? Look at all those bones coming out. The reason for that is because this event is saying that the entire time the attack animation is playing, it should constantly be creating projectiles right? We want to make it so that only happens a single time. We just want one projectile to come out. And we might also want it to come out at a specific frame in the animation. So I'm going to add a couple more conditions over here. Um, first, let's say, let's say just one projectile should come out. Whenever you want just one thing to happen in an event where a bunch of things are happening, you can double click over here on the left tab. And under the system, there's an option for trigger once while true. With trigger once while true, it means that even though the attack animation plays for a long time, which would normally create a lot of projectiles, just do it once, just trigger one time. And that helps. Now the bone's coming out just a single time, right? But there's a couple other things I think we should do here. For one, we should make it so that the bone comes out just on the right frame of animation. For example, if you look at my ghost, and if I go to the attack animation, he kind of like starts to like spit and he really doesn't spit out the bone until frame two, right? Um, it starts on frame zero. So even though this is the third frame of animation, the number is two. So what I'm gonna say is let's not make the bone appear until the animation gets to frame two. Check your animation, see which frame you wanna have the projectile actually appear on. And we can go over to our event sheet. We can add another condition over here. We can say that not only does the attack animation have to be playing, but our character also has to be on frame two, for example. Mine is two, yours might be different. But if we click on compare frame, we can say the frame has to be equal to, and for mine, two. Now this will only happen on frame two. There is one kind of trick to trigger once 
It'll only work if you put it at the bottom of the list. You always have to have trigger once at the bottom of your conditions. So if you add another condition, just drag trigger once down to the bottom or else the game will break, it just won't work. So now when the attack animation is playing, the frame is on the frame two, one time the bone will come out. Great, that's pretty good. Now the other thing we can do is we can make it come out of a specific spot on our character. So say you have like, you want the projectile to just come out of the, you know, the end of your wizard's wand or, you know, the end of the cannon on your character's arm, whatever it might be. We can adjust that to, if you double click on your character and you go to the attack animation, go to the frame where the projectile appears. Mine is on frame two, yours might be a different one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the origin point tool and we're gonna add what's called an image point. If you right click over here on the left side, click on add new image point, and I would recommend naming this. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna name this. I'm gonna call mine projectile. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure you remember what the name is. And this image point, you wanna make sure you have this one selected, not your origin point, but the, the image point you just created. That's where your projectile is gonna come from. So you can move that wherever you want. Right now it's gonna be kind of in the middle. I'm gonna make mine right in the center of my mouth. You can move that exactly where you want it to be. Once you've got that set up, go ahead and close that. Let's head over back to our event sheet. We can go to this action where we said character spawn projectile. And one of the options says, which image point do you want it to spawn on? Now what you have to do is use the quotation marks and type in the name that you used for that image point that we just created. I called mine projectile. So I'm gonna do quotation marks projectile. If you don't remember, just go back over to your layout, double click on it, go to your attack animation, go to frame two, and you should see it right there, projectile. Great, let's try that out. Cool, comes out of just the right spot. Now the next thing we're gonna add is we're gonna make the projectile aim towards the location of the mouse. Right now they always just fly towards the right because that's like the default angle for the bullet behavior. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the angle of motion to always find the angle between where the um, projectile is and where the mouse is. It's similar to what we do with the enemy. So it might seem a little bit familiar, but let's go back over to the event sheet. We're gonna add an event. We wanna think about when do we wanna set the angle here? You have options. You can make it so that the projectile always sinks to where the mouse is, kind of in the same way that the enemy always chases the player. That's gonna make kind of like a homing missile towards your mouse. Um, but I think that might make it too easy. What we should do is we should make it so it aims towards the mouse just the second that the projectile is created and then it just goes on its course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my projectile and I'm gonna say that this is only gonna happen when my projectile is created. So the second that my projectile appears, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an action, go to our projectile and we're gonna go down to the bullet behavior section and we're gonna set the angle of motion. And just like with the enemy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in the word angle, or uh, parentheses. We're gonna type in the name of our projectile. Mine is just projectile.x. The name of your projectile.y. The name of the mouse, which is just mouse.x, and mouse.y. What this means, this, um, this expression, is it finds the angle between where the projectile is, its x and y location, and where your mouse is, the X and Y location. So for the second that it's created, it'll set the angle towards your mouse. And it works. Now, if you wanted to, instead of it just doing on created, you could do like, say for example, every tick. And that would make it so like, it'll always follow where your mouse is, which is kind of fun, but I feel like a little weird. So let's just do, um, let's just do on created. Now, there's one other thing that I think we should fix here. Uh, when my character faces the wrong direction, like if my character's facing to the right and I'm shooting my bone to the left, he should flip to face the right direction, right? It's kind of weird that he's facing the wrong direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an event that says whenever I click the button to attack, if the mouse is on the left side, I'll flip my character to face towards the left. If my mouse is on the right side, I'll flip my character to face towards the right. So let's try that out. We're gonna add an event. And uh, the condition's going to be when our player clicks the mouse button, right? So mouse on click. 
But at the same time, I want to add another condition over here. I'm going to say when the player clicks the mouse button, and I also want to compare the X location of the mouse and the character. So I can go to say the character and I can compare X. Just like we did before, I'm going to compare the X. And I'm going to say if the X of my character is greater than the X location of the mouse, mouse.x, then I can add an action and take my character and I can mirror them. What that means is if my character is over here and my mouse is over here, when I click the button, they should quickly face the direction where they're gonna shoot the bone, right? And we can do the same thing true for the opposite as well. I'm gonna add an event. I'm gonna say on the mouse, when it's clicked, and in this case, if my character's X, their X is less than the mouse's X, then I will take the character and set it to not mirrored. And try that out. So if I'm facing that way, if I face that way, it always faces to shoot the right direction. That helps. Great. Now this is working really well, except for the fact that the projectiles don't actually do anything, right? They don't actually hurt the enemy. Let's do that next. So let's make a group for this. I'm gonna call this uh, character attack. And um, we can take all the events we just made. I can organize it into the character attack group. There we go. And let's add a new event that's gonna control our enemy's life. Now to do that, we're gonna to have to talk about something we haven't talked about before, which are called instance variables. Um, and in fact, let's say cancel here and let's go over to the layout and let's click a single time on our enemy. When you have your enemy selected, over here on the left side, you'll see where it says instance variables. When an instance variable is, it's like a, a number that you can keep track of attached to every object. So every time there's an enemy on the screen, they'll have their own little variable. A variable can be a number, it can be a true false statement. Um, let's add a new one. And I'm gonna call this variable health. This is gonna be the health of my enemy, the life points of my enemy. For the type, there's options, Boolean number string. We'll talk about the other one soon, but let's just do number for now. And the initial value is going to be how much life your enemy has. I'd recommend starting with a small number. We're gonna to have to test this, so you don't wanna to have to hit it like 100 times to test it out. Let's just do three to start with. You can always adjust that. If you ever wanna give your enemy more life, you can just click on your enemy, go over to its variable over here and increase it. I think three is a good place to start. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add an event that says when the projectile and the enemy hit, when, they're, when they collide with each other, we're gonna subtract one from an, its instance variable of health. So I'm gonna say the condition's gonna be projectile on collision with another object. So when it collides with the enemy, then the action's gonna be for our enemy, we go down to the instance variable section and there's an option for subtract from. We're gonna subtract from the health variable a value of one. And you can have more damage if you want. The higher the number, the more damage it'll do. So I think one is a good place though. So every time it gets hit with a projectile, it'll subtract one from its health variable. Now that's great, but it doesn't actually, you can't tell, you know, it's really, nothing happens when you hit it. It's <laughs> just like it's subtracting from the variable, but we haven't told it to do anything when the health variable becomes zero. So we have to add a second event. And we're gonna say for the enemy, we're gonna compare the variable right here under the instance variables. Compare instance variable, we're gonna say when the health is equal to zero. Now, in fact, instead of just equal to zero, I would recommend doing less or equal. And the reason why is because say you have an attack that does like 10 damage, but you have an enemy that only has three life, the enemy ends up with negative seven damage, negative seven health. And uh, if you only say equal to zero, it's skipped right past zero. And now the enemy is like unkillable, immortal. So you always want to do less or equal just in case it happens to skip past zero. So when the health is less than or equal to zero, we'll add an action, we'll go to our enemy, and uh, let's just destroy the enemy. We'll get rid of them. Destroy. Now let's try it out. So I hit it once, twice, three times, and it disappears. 
I think it's kind of weird that my projectiles keep going through my enemy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another action here. I'm going to say when the projectile collides with the enemy, not only does it subtract one from the health, but we should maybe also add an action and destroy the projectile. So go to projectile, destroy. That's pretty good. So now when the projectile hits, disappears. The only thing that's kind of weird now is that it doesn't really communicate very well. Like I can't really tell that I'm hurting the enemy. Uh, the projectile disappears, but they just keep running after me. And then also when they die, they just disappear, right? We want the game to communicate to the player when they're actually like damaging the enemy and when the enemy has been destroyed. There's different ways we can do that. I think one good way to show that we're hurting the enemy is just by making the enemy flash. That's like kind of common visual language for, uh, for you've damaged this, uh, this object. We can do that pretty easily. There's a flash behavior in Construct. So if you click one time on your enemy and then go to behaviors, you'll find a new behavior, flash. It looks like a lightning bolt. Now if we add the flash behavior to it, we can just say that, okay, when it collides with the projectile, we'll add another action. We could take the enemy and we can make them flash. Because we added the behavior, we'll find it in the, uh, in the options for the action. Now the flash has a couple things. On time, off time is just like how long it stays visible or invisible. Duration is how long it'll flash for. Um, one second's probably good. Let's try that out. So now every time we hit it, flashes for a second. And uh, that just kind of reads like, okay, I know that I'm uh, damaging the enemy. Now here's the last thing we're going to add for this. We want, we have an animation that we can put in for when our enemy is destroyed. Now we don't want to add this animation to our enemy. We're actually going to make it its own standalone object. And the reason why is because say we change the animation for the enemy to the destroy or defeat animation, the enemy is still going to be chasing us and it can still hurt us. So even though the defeat animation is playing, it still is actively attacking us, which is kind of weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the defeat animation as its own standalone object. So I'm going to insert a new object. I'm going to go down to the sprite. I'm going to call this enemy defeat. It's an object that just plays the defeat animation of my enemy. And, uh, test it out. Here's my defeat animation. If you haven't made the defeat animation yet, probably should. There's mine. It's way too big. I'll make it smaller. And um, what I'd recommend is moving this outside of the game space. Same with the projectile too, actually. Let's move it outside into the gray area so that it's not in the game when the game starts. And we're gonna go over to our event sheet. And we're gonna say that when the enemy's health becomes zero or less, not only do we wanna destroy the enemy, but we also want the enemy to spawn the enemy defeat. So I'm gonna add an action here, go to the enemy, go down to spawn another object, and the object it's gonna spawn is the enemy defeat. Good, click done, there it is. Now I recommend dragging this above the destroy. It'll probably work, but typically, if we tell it to destroy the enemy and then tell the enemy to spawn another object, it can't do this because it's already destroyed, right? So I drag it up, spawns the enemy defeat first, then destroys itself. Let's try it out. Hit it once, hit it twice, hit it three times, and there's this little animation. That looks good. Now notice there are some pixels left over here. And those pixels just kind of sit there. We have to add something that says like when the enemy defeat animation's finished, just get rid of it. Just destroy the enemy defeat. We don't need it anymore. So we're gonna add an event. We're gonna say the conditions when the enemy defeat on finished. And then the only animation is animation one. So when animation one is finished, add action, enemy defeat, destroy. That way when the animation's finished, it just destroys itself and we won't see the last frame of the animation there. Perfect. Okay, I think we can, let's make a group. Um, I'm gonna add a group. I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this enemy health. And I could move all of these enemy health into that group. Perfect. Let's save it. We'll leave it there and uh, we'll continue this in the next video. Thank you.